everyone welcome back to my channel so today we're going to do some paper quilting now we're not going to be doing any sewing it's literally just sticking and gluing and um, what you'll need is circles and you can get your circles from dies punches um compass drawing around glasses anything that's got a solid circle that you can draw around and cut out nicely you can use your scanning cut things like that so you're just going to basically need circles and i'll go through what i did um, when we get there um, also I used an embossing folder at the end as you can see there it's got an embossing folder over the whole print just to give it that like quilted look but this is the circles and stars quilting pattern I've also used a stitch die cut border around the edge just to keep that sewing thing going on and then I added my sentiment with vellum with a stitch border because it didn't really show up my papers were very strong in colour so the sentiment didn't show up too well so I tried a few different colours and I thought I oh, know I'll put vellum because that'll help lift it off the page so we'll get started on this and thanks everyone that has subscribed liked and shared all my videos I do appreciate that here's a, just a couple of other examples that I went through and this is an all the same color as you can see as is this one I found this one a little bit too pale my idea behind it's daisies and I thought how cool would that be with craft card it looked really beautiful and then there's a variation on this one so just to point out actually you'll see that there's two going through the middle there and three at the top and bottom on this one I've got three going through the middle and it was a lot easier because on this one I, I had to cut quarter circles out in the corners so we'll do it this way but you can also keep them square which I'll talk about when we do it but thanks everyone for um like I say subscribing liking and sharing my channel and we'll get started on this so what you're going to need is 12 circles okay now mine are about six and a half centimeters which is what in inches that's about what was it one two three four five six it's about two and three quarter inch circles but you know you're gonna ha make these to the size of your card so just start off with you know what you like i made all mine and then i cut the card to suit so you're going to need 12 circles and I'm going to do all the same colour but like I said you can do multi-colours and everything. So take 12 circles and then I'll just, this is all half done so we don't spend too much time on everything. But then you need a square. So the size of square you need is going to depend on the circle that you've chosen. So what you're going to need is a square and it depends on the thickness of the square that you cut and the paper you're using. Now you'll see that when I lay that on there it doesn't completely come right to the points. The points don't come to the outer edge of the circle and that's on purpose because when you fold it you lose some paper. You see as it folds around you do lose some paper to that fold. So you don't want it to be right up to the edge and then you just use that square and push each side you can open it back up again to do the other sides if you want and then push into the sides and that's how you do that you take them off and then you just fold them in and you've got your square it's patterned on the back and you can use double-sided paper as well for these that's fine i wouldn't use too thick a paper i did try it with some stronger paper and it didn't work that well to be honest i found it quite difficult this is going to be pale in effect this one the other thing you're going to need to do so you need seven of these for the pattern i'm doing now it depends on if you're going to keep your square you may not need to do the next stage so i'll just show you how to do it so i've got my seven there i believe and I'll just show you how to make the halves. Now what I like to do is fold the circle in half first, okay? Because when you do all the folds and everything, you're going to need to fold it in half or draw on it to find out where halfway is. So I just think it's easier to fold it in half because you can just roll it up and make sure that it's exactly half. It's really easy to fold circles in half. And then just cut that down through the centre. I'm just going to accurately cut that down through the center like that and i need to do five of these which will give me ten of these little triangles for five six seven eight so when i've done this one i'll have my ten so then what i did was i took my square and i just lined it up to that line but then that means that point's touching there and I don't want that point to touch, I want it to come away a little bit. So I'll just put it all away and then fold down. 
and then fold down like that and you do want it to be on the edge on the point so that's one and then do the other one so the size of the square you're going to need depends on your circle so if you fold your circle in half you'll get your diagonal of a square but you need it to be just a little bit shorter so the easiest thing to do is to measure that and then make a square that big and then cut it down a little bit that's probably the easiest way to do it so i'm just going to pop that back on halfway between the edge of the circle and then pull it away from the line a little bit and then just fold that over so that I'll get to the point there and to the point there like that so we've got our halves now as well so now when I put these together you'll realize that you don't have to have halves now what I like to do to put mine together I've tried lots of ways on this guys I took the card and I stuck them onto the card and that was really difficult to get the angles right now if you're doing squares you could do that if you're keeping your squares that way round then yes you can do that put them straight onto the card but if you want a diagonal star shape like I've done like that on your card then by all means do that or you could fill a bigger piece of card with squares and then cut it down accordingly so it's entirely up to you if you want to do it my way then you're going to use halves if you want to just lay squares down then you can go straight onto the card so what I do is I like to start off and make a square so, but I turn it over and I just butt all the sides up together like this. Get them all butted up and I take tape. And I just use tape and I, I loosely get them together, you see. It's not 100% together. So first of all, I'm going to do these seven. So I'm going to just put a bit of tape on there. And then put this one in. Pop a bit of tape on there. You need them to be tight together as well. Otherwise, when you put your underlay card on, it could show through. But this, I'm just showing you how to get that diagonal pattern because I think I like that effect. I think with the squares, it wouldn't quite have the same effect. So just pop that on there. I'm just really holding it all together with this tape for now. Like so. So you've got your first four done and then I'll change it diagonally and I want three there so I know I've got to put three on the end like that that's how my start before the halves come in that's how I'm going to start like this I'm just going to do that so I just need to turn that over and pop my three down like so and I've one there one there and one there so you're basically like putting two squares together it doesn't take long once you've folded all your circles and I just sat in front of the telly and folded all of mine of an evening so it's a it's a nice craft that you can come away from your workspace and do it it's always nice to have a little in front of the TV thing to do isn't it like in knitting and crocheting things nice to relax we don't relax enough do we day and age so just get all those ones together like that and now it's up to you if you want to put these onto your card so you can see this works quite well and then add your um, triangles to the card so to speak so what you're going to do is you're going to put three like at the top and when they're on I, I think I will put it onto the card so I'm just going to use glue and it, if you leave it not through an embossing folder and don't stick these down that's the effect you're going to get so you get lots of shadow it's really nice it, it could get caught in the envelope when you're popping it into the envelope quite easily that's the only thing so just pop all that on a bit of glue all over those corners etc and it gives you time to maneuver and I, you know I'm quite happy this cardstock is a little bit small because the last thing you want are edges showing through okay pull that out a bit more because i want it to go over that way and you can manipulate it like that because you're using wet glue there so that's quite good so i've got all of that on because this is going to go onto another card base anyway 
so then what you need to do and I like to just put my glue down onto the card I'm just going to do the top half and it's really quick and easy and then you just have to pop your triangles along the edge up here of your card and you can cut these down at the end if they if they don't work quite you know properly you can cut it off I did on mine and it, it doesn't really notice that you've chopped some of that um, half circle off to be honest I was quite surprised I thought it would but it didn't and I was like oh goody goody what a wonderful thing to happen <laughs> sorry I'm a little, losing it a little bit today right so you see here this one because there's a little bit too much of a gap there I can fix that because what I can do is pull this back out a little bit you won't notice that crease extra crease and just make that a little bit tighter in so you can adjust it as well it's really simple isn't it it looks effective and complicated and I'm sure quilters it must be a nightmare trying to get circles with all these lines square unless there's a special tool for it then they start coming down the sides so we're just really filling in that edge like that and now we can do the front end bit of fluff on there I'm going to put all the glue on I'll probably wear it on my arm in a minute now let's pop that down so you can see if you were using squares you wouldn't need to be doing these triangle pieces at all you could just go on with a square but you wouldn't have that diagonal look actually why, why not um like go onto a search engine like google and just type in circle stars quilt patterns and just see what people have made in the quilt you know in actual fabric with them and then you can um sort of like have a look at the patterns i think oh i like the way that one goes There's a lot of inspiration out in the world might go this way first actually because that one's not a good line up and I can adjust this final one to suit not sure if there's enough glue on there took some off that other one always cut yourself a, an extra circle or two as well just in case anything doesn't quite work out and you can always make another one if you've gone off a bit I think that one's gone off a bit tighten that down so there you go then they look nice with the 3d effect on there as well but what we'll do is pop it into an embossing folder just to show you the final effect of the difference it makes now like I say I did glue all mine down and I'll show you what happens when you don't they will pick back up but the embossing folder does tend to squash them down I'm just going to make sure I don't crush because they're not glued you can pinch the paper and I think it's all all right so I'm just gonna it's noisy so I'm just gonna pause the video and just run it through the machine okay so I've run it through the machine I've just taken it out move the plates so there you can see when it's got that quilt pattern design all over and you can use anything these will raise back up because you haven't glued them down if you still wanted to have that 3d effect on there so you can put all these back up and you see here the edge it's untidy you can see all along here now if i just cut you can see the pattern paper shining through along the edge like this to get it all square to my card you can see even though i've cut those circles they don't look odd at all they look fine so you can trim your card from the back always turn it over and just take these little pieces off that are overhanging it's a little bit there as well just remove them like that and it doesn't make any difference to your card you can still pick all these up as well like I say and then mat it and layer it and pop your sentiment on if someone's made you a quilt what a lovely thank you card to say thank you for your quilt okay guys I hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you again really soon thanks for watching bye